This is a fairly short one, so we're going to get straight into it. But before we do, it's important that you know the disclaimers. It is a true crime. It involves real people. Them real people have real families. So do be sensitive when you comment and share. In 2020, Timothy Keith Bremer was a 41-year-old police officer. He'd been married to his wife for 14 years, and they had a child together. For what it's worth, his wife was also a police officer. But unbeknown to her, for the 10 of the 14 years that they'd been married, Timothy had been having an affair. The person he'd been having this ridiculously long affair with was Claire Parry. She was also 41 year old, and she was also married. And her husband was also a police officer. But Claire herself was a nurse. Claire and her husband had two children together. So basically, let's just summarise this. Timothy's a copper, his wife's a copper, Claire's a nurse, but her husband's a copper. They were one key difference between their marriages in 2020 though, and that was Claire's husband had found out about the affair. He'd recently found out about it, and he was contemplating leaving her. In early May 2020, fresh out of lockdown, Claire made contact with another police officer called Kate, and Kate told Claire that she'd been having an affair with Timothy in 2011. So if you do the math, that means in 2011, Timothy was married and having an affair with Claire and having an affair with Kate, albeit not necessarily at the same time, because obviously Claire and Timothy's affair were on and off. But still, this guy is getting around a bit. So obviously Claire's now thinking that, wait, this is not how it seems. She starts to see Timothy in a different light. And on the back of that, she then starts to do a bit more research about Timothy. This involved her creating a fake Facebook account and doing this research about him, investigating him and finding out what he's been up to, she came to the conclusion that he's a serial womanizer, a man whore. She'd come to the conclusion that he'd cheated with at least two other women. So obviously now Claire's hurt, she's upset and she decides that she needs to tell Timothy's wife about their affair. But she doesn't go straight to Timothy's wife and tell her. She tells Timothy that that's what she's going to do and kind of gives him the opportunity to go and tell her himself. But he didn't take that opportunity. And on the evening of Friday the 8th of May, Timothy was on a night shift. Throughout this night shift, he was having lengthy conversations with Claire. And then on the next morning, on Saturday the 9th of May, he left work at quarter to seven in the morning, again speaking to Claire. At this point, Timothy knows that Claire's really angry and he's starting to think that she is going to tell his wife. Claire was supposed to start work at 4 o'clock that afternoon. But during that day, she says to Timothy, Look, you need to find an excuse to get out of the house. You need to come and meet me. I'll meet you at the Owens Inn pub car park at 3 o'clock. That's one hour before she's supposed to start work. Now, I'm well aware that we haven't actually said where we are in this case. But the Owens Inn car park is in West Parley near Bournemouth, England. So, that afternoon, Tim finds an excuse to leave the house... And he arrives at the car park at half past two. He sat there for roughly 15 minutes. And at quarter to three, Claire arrives in the car park. She gets out of the car, walks over to Timothy's car and gets in. Now, where Timothy is parked and where Claire is parked is completely out of CCTV sight. So it's quite unknown what happened for the next 15 minutes. But at two minutes past three, a text was sent from Timothy's phone to his wife's. And it simply read... I'm cheating on you. It's believed that message was sent by Claire Parry. Obviously, shortly after that, his phone lit up with tons of calls and tons of messages from his wife in response to the out of blue text of that confession. But all of them calls and texts were ignored. Another three minutes on, at five past three, Timothy's phone was reset. All of the texts, the apps, all the personal data was wiped from his phone. Now, at some point about now, a fight broke out in the car. But like I said, he's out of CCTV, so we can't be exactly sure what happened. Then at 26 minutes past three, Timothy appeared on CCTV. He was walking across the car park towards the entrance. He'd been stabbed three times, or at least he had three stab wounds to his inner left forearm. He had blood stains on his shirt and on his shorts. A couple were passing the car park and they saw him. He says, look, I've been stabbed. They form emergency services. But at no point up to now, as he mentioned Claire. So while they're on the phone, this other person, part of the couple, were walking around the car park 
and they saw Claire's body. She was half in and half out of the driver's side door. Let's bear in mind, this is Timothy's car. She's half in, half out of the driver's door. Her skin is blue, and she's got blood coming from her mouth. As you'd expect from that scene, both the witnesses thought she were dead. And technically she were. The emergency services managed to revive her, and she died the next day in Royal Bournemouth Hospital. But back at the scene, Timothy were telling people that it was Claire that had stabbed him. The penknife that had been used were from his glove box compartment inside his car. So when the police and ambulance and paramedics arrived, he was arrested. That was at quarter to five. Get him in the ambulance. Let's get him in the ambulance. Yeah. Not, not to be out here. Yeah. You've always yeah. Moves. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get him in there. Get him in there. We'll, we'll leave the questioning to you guys. We'll just medically look at it and go from okay. that way. Right, Tim. Sure. Yeah, yeah, no I'm going to um, check his. We're going to stand up. You want some out? Come on, Tim. I think we want you. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, Tim. Tim. Tell me that. Give it that. Top. Oh. I've just obviously because I've been listening to what's been said. I've written down what you said to me. What's been said, right? When we were first got here, when I first saw you outside, you were asked by the paramedics what was happening. You said something similar to, "I was having an affair with her. She got me to meet her here. She was going to tell my wife." Um, and then just now, when you've given the paramedic a bit more of the details, but female arrived. You're right there. Sorry. Yeah. The man arrived after me and jumped in my car. She was so angry. She was going to tell my wife we were having an affair for years. She was going through my phone. I don't remember what happened. She was going through my phone. I think she told my wife I was going to drive off and kill myself. The wounds were caused by a pen knife in my car. I've had it for years. Don't remember what happened. Just felt it go in, I think, three times. If you're happy, that's basically what you've said to the paramedic. Obviously not worth a word if I can get you to sign your life away for us there, please. No. Alright, Tim. As you said, you're going to get arrested at the moment. I'm arresting you on suspicion of attempted murder. You don't have to say anything. But it may have to make my question. Somebody there at Ryan and Court. Anything you do so may be given an evidence, OK? Obviously, we're going to let the paramedics take you down to the hospital, get you all checked out first. And obviously, you know the process from there, all right? Yeah. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's fine. We'll get, the, get, you down to, uh, get you down to the hospital so we can get you all checked out and then we can do it from there, all right? Yeah. After his arrest, he was taken to hospital to have his injuries attended to. While at the hospital, his story starts to change a little bit. Now he's saying he might have stabbed himself to get Claire to pay attention. And then in the interview the following day, he accepted that he had actually stabbed himself. But that confession was too late. You see, at the scene when he told the witnesses that, look, she stabbed me, obviously the operator on the phone said stay well away from the car, stay well away from the person, it could be dangerous. Which meant that Claire had to wait even longer before she got help. Throughout the legal proceedings, Timothy Bremer denied murder, but he did admit to manslaughter. However, he was charged with murder, so it went to trial. And in court, Timothy described their on-off 10-year-long affair as a little bubble of niceness, saying that him and Claire would sometimes go months without seeing each other. He also highlighted that in May 2020, the country was just coming out of lockdown. So they hadn't actually seen each other for a while, but they had been talking by text message. He said that when Claire got into his car at the Owens Inn, she was angry and she asked for his phone so she could look through the social media apps. She was so angry. I don't know if she was jealous of my perfect life, as she called it. He said after the text message to his wife that was sent at 2 minutes past 3, him and Claire continued to talk. She were in the passenger seat, and he asked her to get out of the car. But she refused, so he tried to oyster her out. And it was during that struggle that he must have applied pressure to her neck, adding that he didn't realise what he was doing, and that must have resulted in her death. I absolutely did not want to kill her or cause any serious bodily harm. I didn't intend to kill her. However, he did say that he planned to kill himself because of the consequences of the affair and his wife finding out about the affair. Now, this is a common theme. I did read that the prosecution also put to the court that he tried to buy rope and the intention of the rope was to kind of emotionally blackmail Claire into being silent. He was going to say that if she'd say anything, he'd hang himself. So... 
it is a constant theme of him being unfaithful and then saying that he wouldn't want to survive if his wife found out because he'd miss his kids and he loves his kids, yada yada. He also told the court when he stabbed himself in the arm then three times, Claire did not care. He said he demanded that Claire get out of the car, but she refused. So he started to push her out and his arm must have slipped up in the melee. The court were told that moments after he told one of the passerbys, I'm never going to see my son again. I'm going to prison for a very long time. But as I said, this was a trial for murder. The prosecution's case was that Timothy had become really angry that Claire sent that message to his wife, and as a result, he strangled her. And while looking through Claire's phone, they found a note on Claire's phone that had been writ as a message to his wife. It had never been sent, it was just in the notes, and here's what it said. Dear Martha, what I'm going to say is likely to come as no surprise to you. I am figuring you have always suspected but try to ignore. There is no easy way to say it, but put simply, your husband is a manhole. Myself and others have fallen victim to his words and charms. His promises have been in a loveless marriage to only staying for the sake of her children. He sucked me in years ago and made me believe that he and I had a future until he realised you were pregnant. He didn't tell me about you at first, that he was married, and when I found out, he told me he was going to leave. I have since realised I am not the only one that he has weaved this story to. There are at least two more. He tells us that we are special, that he has fallen in love with us. Now the key part of any true crime case, the pathology report. And the pathologist confirmed that Claire had sustained severe injuries to her neck, with a fractured hyoid bone, and damage to the cartilage of the right and left of the larynx. There was deep internal bleeding and bruising to the neck tissue, as well as bruising to the jawline. There was multiple evidence points of asphyxiation and two mechanisms that might have caused the injuries, either using the crook of an elbow as a fulcrum, or by putting the forearm across the throat. The extent of the injuries was that the minimum period of compression was between 10 to 30 seconds. This is what led to the asphyxiation that starved the brain of oxygen, which killed Claire. There was also 31 separate sites of blunt force trauma to her upper body. These were made up of nine areas of bruising to the trunk, 11 areas of bruising on the upper right arm, 10 areas of bruising and abrasion to the left arm and an area of bruising and laceration to the mouth. The prominent areas of bruising on the arms were consistent with a grabbing action and the injury to the mouth was consistent with the blow. So it was very consistent from the pathology report that Claire had frantically fought back from the attack. And Timothy's account of what happened never really explained Claire's neck injuries. Between Claire's death and the sentencing, Timothy's wife didn't speak to him. However, Timothy's friends and family did come to support him in court and they said things like he's a true gent, a committed family man, a man of integrity, he's calm and they claimed that they'd never seen him lose his temper and one friend even said I would trust him with my life. It took the jury just two hours and 50 minutes to return a verdict of not guilty of murder. So with that being said, Timothy was sentenced for manslaughter. The judge concluded that the qualifying trigger for the defence of loss of control was only just met. So the starting point for the sentencing was 14 years, with a range of 10 to 20 years. It identified two aggravating factors. First, Claire would have known that Timothy were killing her, so that were mental and physical suffering. Secondly, Timothy's conduct in the aftermath. It said here that Timothy, during his policing, was a specialist road cop or something like that, so it would have known how serious Claire's injuries were, he would have known she needed help, but he lied. He made sure that nobody went near her, he lied to try and protect himself, so that is a massive aggravating factor. In mitigation, the judge accepted that Timothy was a man of positive good character in serving the public. Timothy was remorseful, the offence wasn't premeditated, the fact that he's an ex-policeman could mean it's a difficult prison sentence for him, which I don't think is fair. I know this isn't a New thing it is said quite often for police officers, but I don't think it's fair that you should have your sentence reduced for that. Surely it's an aggravating factor that you've misused your person of trust and you've misused that by murdering somebody. He also took into account the current restrictions in prison resulting from the pandemic. Which is, does that mean all the other inmates have had their sentences reduced? Anyway, I don't actually know the answer to that by the way. That ended with Timothy's sentence being for 12 and a half years. However, he was also given a discount for his guilty plea, 
Because let's not forget, although this was a trial for murder and he pled not guilty for murder, he had always said that he'd plead guilty for manslaughter. So it was discounted 15%. Ultimately meaning Timothy Bremer was sentenced to 10 and a half years. However, this sentence was appealed on the grounds that it were unduly lenient. And the appeal process did agree. The main agreeance was with the 15% discount for the guilty plea. And there were lots of techn technicalities about this, saying because it had still gone to trial and such, that it, it, there's reasons that you get discount for a guilty plea, and most of these reasons weren't met. So they revoked that discount, adding an extra three years to his sentence, meaning Timothy Bremer would be sentenced for 13.5 years. There you go, that's all I've got for you. I'm sorry it's a short one, and I'm sorry if it's not coming out quite right. It's been really sunny and now it's cloudy, and that makes me absolutely awfully tired. I've been sleeping fine, but I just feel so robotic and outwashed. Again, I would try my best to find a really good case for you. That sounds bad, doesn't it? I hate saying that. But I did, I, I wanted to find a nice, interesting case for you, and I would run out of time. So I had to stick with this one, and it is a really awful case. I find it incredible that their affair went on for 10 years. All right, it'd been on and off, but 10 years. That's a very long time for an affair. It's a long time for a relationship, never mind an affair. And these were all professional people too. The, the people having the affair was a nurse and a police officer. The police officer had been having affairs with other police officers, his wife was a police officer, the nurse's husband was a police officer. <laughs> when I started reading that, I wrote it and I thought, that sounds far too complicated. What an absolute awful case. And as something that we always end up saying, what about the kids? It's the kids that suffer in this. And the, the outcome is, I suppose you could say don't cheat. If you're going to cheat, you're going to cheat. But don't be selfish even more than that. Cheating selfish to start with, but to then go and take someone's life to cover it up or whatever. If you do something wrong in life, be big enough to face up to it. Have some integrity. Own it. Your mistake. Own it. You know, this all came about because I think, to be fair, she was a bit jealous. I think it was in her mind that she was going to run away with him and live happily ever after, which is a bit misleading when you've been having an affair for 10 years. If you're going to run away into the sunset, you should do it well before 10 years. But I think she would have quite hurt that the person she was having an affair with was having another affair. He was cheating on her and his wife. And let's face it, a guy that can be like that is potentially a guy that can do anything to get his own way anyway i'm not preaching all i'm saying is i love you look after yourself look after those around you and i'll see you next week remember if you have got any cases you want to request please do bang it in the comments if it's too if there's too many videos on youtube i won't do it and if there's no information that i can find about it obviously i won't do it although what i am thinking of doing is a quick video because there's tons of cases I want to cover but there's not that much information about so I'm thinking of doing a, a few videos where it's just mashups of different cases that are very interesting but not too much detail see you next week guys goodbye